right, welcome once again to the forecast. It is the three cast tonight. Uh, Doc is uh, being island Doc again. He's uh, in, in Miami trying to holler at somebody. Uh, so he will not be here tonight. Uh, Wilkes may be coming on a little bit later, but we do have a special guest on tonight's show, Miss Nicole Briscoe of Queen, Three and King, the season queen. Uh, thank you for coming on tonight. Oh, you're welcome. The Leo Queen. All right. And we got uh, one and only A-Trap in the building as well. <laughs> um, you still here, man? I'm here. here. Man. That's all that counts. Oh. On this, right. side, on this side of the dirt, man. So it can't be yeah, any better than that. But glad to see you tonight. Hopefully, uh, you know, you're, you're doing as well as you possibly can. Hey, man. That's all I can. It's good to be seen, not viewed. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, we, we're excited tonight. We got, a, uh, as we finish off Gospel Appreciation Month, uh, we're coming at you with the Clark Sisters, the First Ladies of Gospel. Uh, this was a Lifetime movie, and we'll kind of get into some initial thoughts, but it was a Lifetime movie. I didn't know, honestly, what to expect. Lifetime, sometimes, the majority of the times, is drama-filled. Um, and and this, didn't, did, this didn't have a lot of, it had some drama, but it was more so telling the story. Right. Uh, the Clark Sisters are, are legendary to gospel. So I would highly recommend watching this. It is available on uh, Amazon. Hulu is where I watched it, but it's also on other platforms as well. So uh, looking forward to it. Uh, so, Nicole, we're going to come to you first, you being our guest. Uh, give us kind of your initial thoughts. And when we say initial thoughts, uh, before you watched it, what, what was kind of your thought process? How, how were you feeling about it? Well, I actually watched it a lot, uh, when it first came out on uh, Lifetime. Okay. Okay. And then, um, but I had forgotten about it until my daughter said, mom, you already watched it. You already seen it. So, but I did go back again on Hulu and watch it as well. So okay. it was that good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, it definitely was. And I felt like it told the story well. Right. Um, Dr. Dr. Clark and just her, uh, you know, some parents just have that. Uh, I'm going to push you guys to be your best, whether right. you want it or not. And, and she was just one of those parents. And you could see the success in her kids, uh, and it, it really told the story well. But uh, a trap, what was your, what was your uh, initial thoughts? My initial thoughts it was very informative. I was totally ignorant. I um, I was out of the church for the vast majority of my life. I heard these songs, but I, I never knew who sang them. Mm -hmm. So as I'm listening, I listen to the music in this one. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah, no choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have, yeah, but uh, I was listening. I'm like, oh yeah, I've heard this before. I'm thinking it was gonna be totally new. I, like, I heard this song before. I heard this song before. I heard, heard this song before. I had no idea who was singing it, but I heard it, and it was pretty. You know, it was very informative. Uh, I wish they would have went a little more in depth with each sister to get to get their personalities out. But you know, yeah. it, like a couple hours, you can't. Like, like I always say, I don't like uh, biopics. I would prefer to be a mini series so you can get to know the people more, you know. But uh I never knew uh what was her name? Twinkie. She her voice is the one that stands out on all of the songs. So mm -hmm. it was very informative. You know, you listen and you hear the songs at your grandma's house, you hear the songs at well, both my grandmothers and aunts, but I never knew who was singing them, you know, yeah, that's nice. And then you know, being being a knucklehead that I was, it was just and get something to eat. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Grandma, listen to this. I'm out. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's all it was. It's just, oh yeah, yeah. Let me hurry up before she <laughs> tell me keep my door closed and stop letting my air out. That's all it was. Yeah, and I knew yeah, some cool. about the Clark sisters. To me, I, I think I remember them that "Bless and Holly" favorite song. That was, which that was actually their reunion, which they did that towards the end. Mm -hmm. But they had so many. Uh, hits and they were pioneers when it came to gospel so we really couldn't do a gospel appreciation month and not do this right because they were really transcending and you know during that time uh this was this was uh, frowned upon this type of gospel because it wasn't uh old school they used uh the organ in a different way it was more of a a R and B, I guess you could say, type of gospel. But 
Nicole, so during during your your time growing up, was this being played in the house? Uh, is this something that you that you grew up listening to? Um, I knew of the Clark sisters and stuff, but I didn't. I didn't. We listened to some of their music because my my dad had all kinds of different albums and stuff. Mm. Some of them were R and B. Some of them was gospel. So we did listen to it, and uh, but not as much as we did the R and B. Yeah, yeah, and, and they they really kind of created a lane to where gospel became a crossover. Mm -hmm. yeah, they you know in the film they were saying their music was played on the radio, and that was you know years later, uh, Kurt Franklin and and that his his kind of uh, surgeons and how his his music was being played everywhere. It didn't matter where mm -hmm. it was. Uh, let me get to the chat real quick. We got uh, Rucker Park in the building. How you doing tonight? Got a new uh, Abby photo there. Uh, we got Raider Cab in the building. And we got uh, Latanya Childs in the building. How you doing? We appreciate you guys for commenting. Uh, as we're going along, feel free to join in. You know, if you watch this show at all, you know, we definitely appreciate the comments and uh, appreciate the support. Uh, so the singing at the beginning, and I think at the beginning, that was when uh, the mom, which is played by Angelou Ellis, which I think she is a super underrated actor. Mm -hmm. I don't she know is underrated. <laughs> praise. Um, and she also, in a previous movie that we reviewed, King Richard, which she did a great job playing uh, Serena and Venus's mom. But um, yeah, talk about that for a minute, uh, Nicole, just. I know she doesn't seem to get a lot of praise, but when she plays a role, she plays that role, seriously. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that because when I did see Venus in the Serena movie and stuff, and she really did do an excellent job in that movie. And she did a great job in the Clark Sisters movie, too. Yeah. She really did. She did an excellent job. And I can go, I just can't believe that she is that underrated. Yeah, yeah, A Trap. You want to add to Most definitely. She's definitely underrated. She's been in some of our favorite movies. You know, Ray. She played the side woman in Ray. Mm -hmm. and Baby Bomb. Uh, she's been in uh, low budget, like, I guess it would be urban classic or hood classic. So, uh, what is it? Into Deep with LL and uh, Omar Epps. Mm -hmm. She's a girlfriend in that. So, she's been a little bit of everywhere. Um, she's in one of my favorite all times. Well, it was a one season deal. Uh, Lovecraft Country. She yeah. was the main character in that. Hmm. Uh, and, you know, she she is her like most black women in Hollywood. They don't get their just due until it's, you know, until they're up in age. Well, she's our age. So, you know, she's, right. you know, she's in, you know, in regards to Hollywood, she's at an advanced age. Then like Viola Davis has been around for a bunch of years. Right. Uh, what's, what's sister name? I can't, how, why, how can I not think? And, uh, Bassett, Angela Bassett, she's oh, right. not getting her due. This is just a sad commentary where right. you have all these talented black women in Hollywood that they don't get their just due until they're 60, 70 years old. Mm -hmm. No, well, she's great. And it's like, nah, she's been great since the 80s, you know? Right. Since she's the 80s. Really now you're going to celebrate it when she's 80. It's kind of sad. Right, right. And uh, she's been in uh, Get Up On It or Get On It, which was the uh, James Brown. Mm -hmm. film i'm not sure what she played in that but she was in that film she was in notorious which was the uh biggie movie mm -hmm. uh, Undercover oh yeah Mother i remember that. that i know she was in that i mean she's been in you know quite a few um and we're talking about decades you know at this point and she's got three movies coming out uh mm -hmm. this year and she's in the color oh, wow. two one so i mean she's she's been she's been putting in work and that, that catalog is continuing to build uh, but at the beginning, uh, shout out to Keisha. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we got my man CJ in the building. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, this was a wonderful movie. Awesome pick to whoever is responsible for choosing this. Uh, we appreciate it. I think it was a collective effort. Uh, she definitely deserves her flowers. Yeah, we and we have to do um, better at that, better at, at giving people their flowers now, like HRF said, not waiting until they're gone. Mm -hmm. and oh, he was one of the best. I mean, just do it now because they'll they'll receive it now. I mean, right. when they're gone, they, they don't know. I mean, they're gone. Right. So, uh, Pastor Dodd in the building, thank you for tuning in. Theodora Blue Streak, thank you for tuning in. Uh, and we got uh, the baby queen in the building. 
Thank you for tuning in as well. Uh, Chef Fine is one. Make sure to follow his channel. Putting out great content, man, every mm -hmm. week. Uh, so, yeah, at the beginning, uh, I think it was when she was like, yeah, everybody get up. Everybody come downstairs. I got mm -hmm. I got I got to. I mean, that's a creative, creative people are like that. When they wake up or when they, when they're, you know, when they're asleep, things are coming to their mind. And she had to get that note. They had to get that note together at that very moment. Uh, but that shows the, uh, I'm going to say it, the Joe Jackson. Now, she wasn't like, I don't know if she was, she wasn't whooping him and all that, like maybe Jordan <laughs> in the film, but I'm sure she probably was. But, you know, that, that was that, that parent that knows what they see in you. And they mm -hmm. will do whatever it takes, whether you like it or not. Yeah, uh, they're gonna pull it out of you, and that yep. was her. Uh, so I, I appreciated that because later on in their lives, they they appreciate it even more. And some of their careers were even bigger, you know, than the Clark sisters. You think about uh, the uh, Karen uh, Clark Shears; she got married. I mean, she her career was huge. Uh, Dorinda, uh, her career was huge too. So. Uh, let, going to that scene, uh, A Trap. What was kind of your your thoughts opening it up to that particular? Yeah, thing? I had that. I had that Joe Jackson kind of feeling as well. <laughs> I was like, man, you gonna wake me up? I'm asleep. And then, right. right. And she told her she was sinning by going saying she's like, don't curse in my house. You said it can't. And I, I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I wish my mother would have been like that when I was playing football. Wake yeah. up, running, running drills. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was dope, man. I mean, but I get, I'm quite sure as a kid, you ain't trying to hit none of that. Like, man, I'm I'm trying to go to sleep. Right, right. I'm trying to get to, I'm trying to get to sleep, and uh, especially if it was a weekend. I don't know if it was a weekend or a school night or whatever, but kids ain't trying to get. Yeah. Uh, she was whipping. It, it was probably on a Saturday morning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, go ahead, Nicole. <laughs> we didn't hear you, Nicole. I said it was probably on a Saturday morning. <laughs> you supposed to be sleeping in. So no. That's that's a, if that's not a black mama right there. If she come <laughs> home and she sees something not done, everybody get up. Well, I did yes. my part. I don't care if you did. You did your part. Everybody's supposed to do their part. So yeah, right. you, man, that that was that, that that's a black mama at its best, and that mm -hmm. just shows the the passion of of a black mom in which she became a single mom at one point because mm -hmm. of the husband situation. So she was not, not only was she pushing her kids to be their best, but she also was doing it basically alone. So, right. I mean, more, more power to more power to her. Uh, let's see. This says, uh, hello, everyone just stopping by having a successful day. We appreciate you for jumping in. If you're in the Facebook group, now, I say this every week. Go to StreamYard.com backslash Facebook. I can see who you are. I'm going to go to the page right now uh, so I can see. I think that's probably uh, who's that? That's Lloyd Phillips. I figured it was Lloyd. Appreciate you for tuning in, Lloyd. Uh, Facebook user is Lloyd, yes. Uh, facts. Uh, when it's when is the child show potential that parent is going to try to abs to, to try absolute best to pull the greatness out of them uh, and she mm -hmm. did a great job. I'm not quite sure if she was on that Joe Jackson tip though. <laughs> she was, but it was a gospel. It was a gospel version of Joe Jackson. She wasn't. Uh, <laughs> they wasn't singing ABC one two three. Uh, what's up, Kirby Alexander in the building? All right, so um, you know the singing in the middle of the night, uh, and then uh, they started getting gold albums. And the part I thought that kind of was interesting is that they had to hide them because if the dad seen it, the dad would have would have mm -hmm. shut the whole thing down. But I think for me, if you're getting like she was saying too, and it was a part of the film, like if we're getting the message out, uh, what what difference does it make that we got gold albums? We can't we can't we can't stop the people that people like our music. Uh, but also just the the harmony. I don't know if we we've seen a group probably since then, a gospel group since then, at the level of the harmony that they had, the different levels of voices, and she was doing a choir. Uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Clark was so. I mean, this wasn't like she the, they were they just kind of fell upon this the success. They were putting in work. Mm -hmm. 
um, the cold that 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 kind of scene comes up and they're starting to hide it and they they they're just becoming bigger than I think what uh, what they what they realize. Uh, what, right. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think that they, I think that they um, was a. I guess I really think that maybe they were they weren't expecting to be as big as they had gotten, mm -hmm. and of, of course the dad. I don't know that he wasn't really on in the the movie that much. But when he the parts that he was in, he didn't act like he was being when he's he was a preacher, right? Right. In the movie. But he didn't act like he he was more concerned about himself. But mm -hmm. look at your kids and your wife and their mm -hmm. the things that they are doing. They weren't out partying and drinking and smoking weed or anything like that. They were praising God themselves and trying to make a way for your family to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand. I don't. I didn't get that part. Yeah. Now uh, Denise might have been doing some of that because Denise was like, "I don't care." Uh, she was. The oh yeah, she. Girl. Yeah, she was a little yeah, out was, there. <laughs> she was like, "I'm gonna live my life. I don't care what what you or Mama or anybody yeah. say." So kind of the ages. It was Jackie, Denise, uh, Twinkie, Dorinda, and Karen was the youngest. So to have that many girls, I mean, mm -hmm. I can only imagine the. The uh, stress, the stress, the yes, and all that going on. Like I'm sure there was some fist fights. I was they showed a couple of them, uh, but I mean, she to be able to hold that together, e even with her kid. And I kind of mm -hmm. like how it showed them doing their own thing because eventually, right, as you become older, you're gonna want to get married. You're gonna want to live mm -hmm. life on your own, and uh, she was. You know, Dr. Clark was definitely reluctant, uh, but he, I mean, at some point she had to, you know, had to let them go because they're not, uh, they're not kids anymore. So, right. You being nice, reluctant. <laughs> <laughs> but that's being, that's just like, yeah, I think that's just like any other mom. They don't want their babies to grow up. Mm -hmm. They want them to stay sheltered most of the time, their whole life. Some, you know, back then, especially. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I know um, uh, going far into the movie, when the Kojic Church told the mom to make a choice, that brought back uh, some horrible memories of the church, quote unquote, especially Kojic. Uh, the Kojic Church uh, was and still is very, very strict. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, they, yeah, they were like, you can't get them wear pants. Um, you couldn't obviously do this type of version of music, even though the music was reaching probably more people than anywhere else at that mm -hmm. point in time. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I get it if you, if that's the rules that you have, but at some point uh, people are going to step outside of that. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at some point you're not going to be able to control people. Right. I think that's what they end up coming down to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dorinda, she was, and she started having hits, you know, later on as she got older. So they all, you know, had their own kind of avenue and uh, hits that they had. Now, uh, Karen um, was was kind of the one that sung the first solo, I guess. Like, I think that was at a Kojic conference or something like that. Um, and that was, she was real nervous and she didn't know, you know, I think that was her first time because she was the youngest. Mm -hmm. But really, Twinkie was the one, kind of like what A Trap was saying, was kind of the glue. So she played the organ, she wrote music, right. uh, and I didn't know, I didn't know she, that was, I didn't know her status. I didn't know at, at how high uh, in regard she was in the group. I thought mm -hmm. more Karen was more so the the lead, but you know, you got and these dynamics. You know, you talk about Jackson Five; they all had a role, uh, right? And they all had at you know role to play, but. Uh, let's talk about uh, Twinkie for a minute, because she was, like I said, the one that was the closest to the mom. And as mm -hmm. we, you know, we go around different parts of the movie, so fast forward and down, and the mom was like, "You need me. Mm -hmm. uh, you, I, you can't go out and live life on your own. You need me. You, you, you just a kid." Which, you know, parents do sometimes use uh, terms to get their kids to stay or to get them to do something, and you gotta mm -hmm. say way but she turned it back around and said you need me like without without me in in this 
group, and especially as she was getting older and her, her health was deteriorating. So I felt like that was really a pretty powerful point in that film. But uh, Nicole, g- give me your thoughts on, on Twinkie and and I then I'll have a follow-up question for y'all too. Yes, I think it was, uh, I think that she wasn't expecting that, that her daughter would want to one day leave mm-hmm. the nest and do her own thing. Right. And I'm, I think that kids, all kids want to do that at some point. Yeah. And if the and some parents though, like I said, they try to hold on to their kids, but sometimes you can push them away from you when you do all when you do those things. Yeah. So I'm glad that the daughter stood up and to mom and said, I have to, you know, I have to have my own life. You need me. Mm-hmm. You right. know? So yeah. I think that was powerful for her to even do that. Cause we did that to Miss Wilma back in the day. She would have <laughs> knocked our heads off. <laughs> Right. You would have woke up like, what happened? Yes. Like, oh, you about to leave. Didn't know what day of the week it was. <laughs> right. So right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I and, and she even, you know, called out the the future husband because I don't think they right. were married at that time. I think they were either getting married mm-hmm. or in the process or you know, whatever it might have been. Yep. But she called it out like you got a job? It's like, no, nah, no, nah, but I'm gonna get a job when I get over there. It's like, yeah. oh, you need to get a job. Okay. Mm-hmm. Bad choices, like bad choices. I mean, that was right. That, that was that was a great scene, and that again showed uh, Angelou Ellis and just the level of acting. Mm-hmm. But uh, Atra, want to touch on that? Yeah, uh, it did. It, you know what? It, it like like uh, Nicole said, it does show you how our parents used to wield with an iron fist. But uh, it also made me appreciate my mother. Took me back to early in my parenting. Um, I remember I would always do do like, everything was my kids, my kids, my kids. So we were at a mall once, and I was making good, good living. And my 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 mother was like, "We should get this, get 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 one of these." And I was like, "No, nah, I gotta get BJ some shoes." She's like, "You can afford the shoes." She was like, "Look, let me tell you something. You make a home for your children and a life for yourself." She's like, "How often do you come see me?" And I'm and I'm, I'm I thought it was guilt. She said, "No, I'm not guilt tripping. You living." And uh, she was like. Your kids are going to be doing what you're doing now and not going to come see you a lot. So you make a life for yourself and a home mm-hmm. for your children. And, and when she when that happened, I was like, clearly she didn't get that message from her parents because she had built her entire existence around that group. Mm-hmm. And it was painful to see those young ladies become women and move on with their lives. Had she done that, it would have been a more it would have been a, a smoother transition and possibly the group never breaks up. Because if you build the uh, family around, hey, we are all, we will always be family, but I need you to grow into your own selves instead of always, like the one sister said, only thing I've done is with, I don't know the difference in what you want and what God want. Right. And, you know, mm-hmm. so it was, it was a powerful movie. It, it was a lesson in, in, in parenting. It was a lesson in relationships. And you mentioned something earlier that made me go to another movie. It was The Five Heartbeats. Twinkie was the Robert Townsend character. Robert Townsend wrote all the music and he mm-hmm. was to end up hurt the most throughout the movie because his brother sold him out, his woman left him. And that's what I was looking at when I was watching this. Yeah. And that's that's a great, that's a great parallel right there. And mm-hmm. and none of them, you know, Twinkie hit did hit a breaking point after the after uh mom passed. But you if you look at you know kind of a history and music in groups. Uh, if you go to like the barge and El the barge was under all the music uh, was had the best voice, but he was under the most pressure. And what did he end up going to? He ended up going to drugs and that and mm-hmm. you know, failed. But none of them, uh, it didn't show it. But none of them seemed to have gone to that point. So I mm-hmm. think that was also kind of a a major point that they were trying to reach. Uh, and then also, if you look at historical groups. They end up getting shorted on money. They end up, you know, coming to venues and not getting paid. And the mom was, you know, she was that mo- that first momager, mm-hmm. I guess, you know, saying like, "Hey, we we need to get paid if we if this is what it's gonna be, this is what we should get." Uh, but they they just started having, you know, hit after hit. So 1982, they had name it, claim it, mm-hmm. uh, and then kind of shortly after that, that uh, they were kind of around that age where. Dorinda got engaged. Some of the sisters wanted that independence, like we've kind of been talking about. And I think, I think, like you said, if if the mom was more like, okay, yeah, 
you know, not not giving them that that pushback or the or the guilt trip, they probably could have mm-hmm. still kind of jailed, but mm-hmm. it would have been like, all right, we're gonna we'll come together when we come together. Mm-hmm. Y'all go live your lives. I mean, I'll call you, you know, when we got tour and all that because they started making some good money, you know, at some point. With mm-hmm. that is hard to do. It not only is it hard to do as a black group, but as an all female group and a gospel. Mm-hmm group mm-hmm. that this is not like this was uh you know a, a group that was singing in clubs and it was an mm-hmm. r&b group. this was a gospel group so i mean that says i think uh you know volumes for the quality of voices that they had where they could you know they could probably really have gone anywhere mm-hmm. you know made a name so um so twinkie was uh Oh, so the part that she sold her catalog. Yes. <laughs> Lincoln. I didn't know that part at all. So that part was definitely something I learned. But uh, even, I guess, it seemed like it was early on in her career because she probably wrote mm-hmm. you know, hundreds of songs after that. But mm-hmm. that is a tale that is told so many times. Either we don't own it or we sell it or they give us the bag. You know, that's, this was basically the bag. Except it was a week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. it was in the bag of money, and she was, you know, she was happy with that. Mm-hmm. She hadn't had anything on her own. Mm-hmm. So I, I, it's a two sided coin. I, I mm-hmm. get where she was at at that moment, but I think she probably, you know, regretted it, especially after she mm-hmm. walked in the store and everybody roasted her. But uh, oh, give, give me your thoughts on that moment. She pulls up in that Lincoln. <laughs> with the paperwork and she all excited and happy and everybody's like what G- give me your thoughts Nicole oh I I can hear you I can't hear you no I said I said give me your thoughts um you know her selling the catalog for the Lincoln oh <laughs> miss let's just say if Miss Wilma was in this movie, we wouldn't. Have <laughs> but it's a furniture movie. Uh, uh, we wouldn't have no teeth if we sold them that catalog <laughs> that early. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't. She didn't know. But at the same time, she sh- maybe she should have asked some asked her mom or some or the other sisters yeah. what did they think about it, you know, to get their input. And maybe she would have would not have sold it. I don't know, but I, I don't know what was going on in her mind at that point. But maybe it was just to have the the money and to buy her own things. Yeah, yeah. And I think too at that point, and then I drop. I'll come to you. The the label, which this happens again. Th- this had a lot of parallels to mm-hmm. black music because the label says, "Okay, you're the you're the creator behind all of this." Like mm-hmm. let's to you and say, hey, you, you should get your own deal. And they came to Karen and they started coming to everybody. And that's that's uh I think that's a, a ploy to not only break the group up, mm-hmm. but cause that division. So then they'll definitely go and do their own their own uh albums because the the label's gonna plant and say, Well, you know, she's got a deal now, so you you might as well go and get a deal too. So I mean this 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 was had a lot of parallels, but uh, go ahead, A Trump. You know what? You know, uh, well, ever since we've been doing the program, we always, it's like every, uh, it's like one continuous chain of events. You know, uh, this thing with the record deal, this is something we visited since the, we think about it. The last five things we've done, this record deal thing has been a reoccurring thing going back to Whitney Houston. You know, it, as, as recently it was Whitney Houston, and then last week we we, we went over to Whitney uh, Aretha Franklin thing. So it's a reoccurring thing. Everything seems to tie in. It's the lack of knowledge that has destroyed us. And then, again, this goes into the Word of God. We're doing gospel mm-hmm. appreciation goes in the Word of God. Our our people will suffer due to lack of knowledge. Right. And again, this is something that instead of the mother holding on to the information, trying to be the domineering person, we need to start sharing. If like let's just say me, you, and Nicole are relatives. 
we're all in the same age group, but Nicole knows something that we don't know. I know something that you don't know, and you know something that me and Nicole doesn't know. And instead of sharing that information, we continue to hoard that information and we right. soften to, to it. And I can understand that that, that that lady, you know, you ain't thinking you're going to sell your music forever. You're just thinking, I gave them a piece and I want my own. Who don't want their own? But again, yeah. this goes to the lack of communication and we continue right. to suffer because we don't share we hoard for power purposes and it's sad like we we going further into the movie but it's sad to see the mom suffering at the end because she didn't share all she had to do was love those kids outwardly like she like they knew she loved her inwardly and mm -hmm. maybe let them be women and that's the problem that most parents have. We don't like I tell my daughter all the time, man. Like I was telling y'all before the show, me and my daughter fight like Tom and Jerry, but we the best of friends and the worst of friends simultaneously. And I tell her at least once a month. And when we talk, I, it's this picture I have in my phone. She was coming up the stairs and she looked back and I just flashed the picture. She couldn't have been older than 11. I was like, this is how I see you every day. I tell her, show that picture all the time. I still see you as this little girl. She'll be 26 years old. I still see us that 10 year old little girl. And her mom got into it late last year. She called me. She was upset. I was like, well, she got to let me be an adult. And I was like, you're never going to be an adult to us. We, Not in uh, appearance, us. Right. I was like, 27 <laughs> years older than you. She's 25 years older than you. You're going to be that. We, we that much older than you until you die. Until we die. And we still going to be that much older than you. So right. it's tough. And it's hard. And there's a lot of life's lessons in this. And I really appreciate it because right. I didn't see this coming. I didn't see any. Like I said, I walked into this totally ignorant. The last two programs I walked into were totally ignorant, not knowing anything because I was out of the church from age 12 to 38. So mm -hmm. this was above my head. Some of these songs I'm hearing didn't even know they were church songs. I thought, you know, because you right. all oh, can remember this. They didn't determine what was church black and white. They just played good music on the radio. Right. I didn't know these were supposed to be church songs. I'm listening. I was like, that's a church song. I'm like, didn't know. So that's what was, I really appreciated. Y'all always get on my head about uh, <laughs> not listening to the soundtrack. And this time I was supposed to listen to it. And I'm like, oh, this is what they hear. Because, man, when I'm watching the movie, I did not hear the music. Y'all y'all get on me every week. I'm like, didn't hear that. Yeah, this hey, this one this one was basically a musical. So you, yeah, yeah, you, know, you, you didn't have a choice. And, uh, Ready to carry you right. Classic move, divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll respond to that and say it does not necessarily suck. We just fall for the banana and the tailpipe every single time. Mm -hmm. Because we want, I think because we want something so bad. Right. That we will take probably the worst possible deal. And we'll and we'll live, you know. You know, some people are able to get out of the deal and continue their career. Mm -hmm. Some people were just able to live a good six to 12 months and right. from there you never hear from them again. So, you know, I think we, the education part is key, which probably as they got older, I'm sure they probably reached back and helped out some of the young artists, even mm -hmm. their kids, you know, uh, Kiera, which is Karen's daughter, her getting into this industry. I mean, it had to have been great that, you know, her mom has been in the industry for that many years and was able to probably share a lot of the, Mm -hmm. nuggets and stuff that you know she needed um so the next part was denise so denise was the one hey, i'm gonna live my best life i'm gonna do this singing <laughs> thing on the side but i'm gonna live my life and i don't care what y'all say uh so she ended up getting pregnant she was the first one out of the group and they were all nervous and uh and i so <laughs> we were in the dressing room and she had that dress on or she was about to put the dress on and i'm assuming the mom was like I thought she said put it on, but she, she never put it on and she never can't. Did she come out? I don't know. She don't probably know. came out, but they just let you believe that, it. Yeah. Just think you, I, that, I think she probably did, but I don't think they showed it on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that's, and I think they were so close, you know, that anything that was different, anything that was, that was not like that driving force that they were, they were like going straight. Forward. They weren't looking left or right. So anybody that was veering off, I mean, it was it was beef. It was beef uh, with them. Uh, let me see. Um, a trap at the Clark sisters' greatest. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Whatever, jerk. 
that, hey, that was a throwback though. When you figured out how to get music playing on Madden, uh, Madden is a classic game. But, uh, Denise cracked me up the entire movie. She, she had so many <laughs> Uh, she didn't care. She did not. Uh, and when at the funeral, you know, that was uh, you, everybody got that relative, you know, the person that's gonna cry on the casket. And say, that's my mama. I don't care what y'all say. And that's my nine boys. Yeah, nine boys. That's yeah. a lot. <laughs> was, was I didn't think what Denise did at the funeral was that terrible. Uh, help me understand. I I didn't do that. You know, I'm sat there and quiet, you know. But I was like, she was, I thought that's the way you're supposed to handle yourself at a funeral. I mean, she wasn't lying on her mama. She, she was over there singing her mother's praise instead of everybody sitting here crying. I was all down and somber. I think it was, it was the, it was the surprise because okay. I don't think they expected her to be there is what it seemed like. Uh, and then she wanted to ride in the car. You know, that's, yeah. it's family drama like that. Sad. Yeah. Probably at a uh -huh. lot. I'm my mama's Denise, so oh, your mom kids. <laughs> but I was, I, man, man, my older sister was the one. My middle sister just came in, and my older oh, sister been in. They were straight A students, and I was king of the cut class cutters. And <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm gonna do enough doing football and baseball season to keep this lady off my back. Then outside of that, it's it's time to do it. I'm, I'm it's, it's, it's cut up time. It's cut up time. I'm like, I got beat to sleep many nights, Jack. I, I'm, I'm just growing some of my back back now. I got beat so many times. Yeah, but I mean, so, Denise why do y'all think life. that Denise won, uh, did the things that she did? Well, I think number one, she was somewhat of the, well, she was the second born. And I think she she been in it for so long like she said, I can't, I can't do this no more. I'm like, I'm living. She said it perfectly. I'm living your dream. Like, what's my dream? Like, my dream is not to be in the Clark sisters my whole life. So I think she just wanted to so much to do her own thing, which well, she did do her own thing. Yeah. Uh, but she was just the. Uh, I think she was. I don't. I don't necessarily think she was being rebellious. I just think she just did not. Yeah. Want to do this for the rest of her life. But do y'all well, think that she regretted it doing doing it that way? Uh, I can only speak from my personal experience, Nicole. Uh, again, my sisters did everything by the book. They 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 cleaned when they were supposed to clean. They <laughs> they went to school, and my mother was she was military. I mean, you 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 know how you fold a bed. You know, you do the sheets, the uh, the military corners. My mother used to make mm -hmm. us do our beds like that. We had to have all our chores done by 4 p.m. Sunday or you couldn't wow. do anything the rest of the week. You know how many times I stayed in the house, Nicole? <laughs> <laughs> I just, hey, it just, I guess that it's, it's just like, you you sit there and you go, yeah, that's right. But uh, you know how many times I got beat? I told a story once, Nicole, you were, I mean, you maybe watched it. Mother, you say, come in the house at this time. And when she was saying, you better be home by this time. I'm standing there looking at her like, you're going to kick my ass when I get back. <laughs> I was definitely going to be in at that time. And, so. and this one time, my mom literally sucked me in the eye in the car. I, I thought wow. I was sneaking in the house. I locked the door, turned around, stood up, pow, right in the eye. And when I got my vision back, she was turning into her bedroom. And I went to bed, and she woke up to breakfast the next morning. Like wow. She, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, man, when, when, when she was doing what she wanted to do, I was like, I get that because it's just something in you, Nicole. It's just something in you. It's just like it's going on out there, and I gotta see it. And, right. and if I have to get to how many times, Nicole? It's, it's been parties. Big Illinois, I tell you. Uh, uh, Big Illinois, my man, Dress. They'll tell you. It's been times they like, hey man, you gonna do this? I'm like, yeah, I'm doing. It. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Yeah. It's In spite of the consequences. Hey, yeah, it's just like it's to this day. Like once we were on the phone laughing and joke about girls, and you didn't, you went on my mama phone after eleven o'clock. And anytime we together, they go, Brian, get your ass off the phone because that's what my mother did. Pick up the phone, get your. And it, it, it's, it's you just like, hey, you, yeah, you. After a while, you bigger than your mama, so you like, 
<laughs> what, you, what she gonna do? She gonna do Hey, I, hey, I, thought that, I thought that same thing. My mom was well, the same height she is now. She was like five one, and I was five, probably six. And I just thought, hey, what's she gonna do? Is she lifted me up against the wall, roughed me up, and everything. I'm like, hey, it don't matter what size you are. Yeah, they will, yeah. they will take, they will handle business. Nicole, I'm sure you can, you can speak to that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. So, yeah, with, so with yeah, Denise, I think when her mom passed, I think she probably regretted some of it. Mm-hmm. You, you, you're going to have that sure she did. reflection of, you know, could I have done something better? Was she there? I don't know if she was there when she actually passed because the other sisters seemed to be there. Yeah, I don't remember seeing her in that scene at all. <laughs> she was more so, she was at the funeral. Uh, was, mm-hmm. uh, Golden said, whole summer's. I guess you yeah. were out whole summers. <laughs> yeah, I was like, hey, you ain't going out all summer. I, when I, <laughs> hey, we're doing this school year. It's going down. <laughs> okay. I mean, hey, I'm going to this out all summer. Way. Okay. <laughs> you going to get tired of beating me. They're going to know it said Ginger Snaps and the Clark Sisters. Shut up, man. <laughs> Those are my favorite cookies as a kid. Hey, side note though, man, them ginger snaps in the in the, in the yellow brown box. Mm-hmm. Man, he, don't, he ain't know about it. He like they the real deal. They are. Tell him again. Oh, tell him the call. Tell them. They that's the so, they the real I, deal. Call your local Piggly Wiggly and pick some of them up. <laughs> hey, tell him. Tell him. Hey, that was on point, man. That was on point. Mm-hmm. Well, Mom, you been teasing me for years about those cookies. I'm like, nah, Jack, those were delicious. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, but yeah, um, Nisi. I mean, I get Nisi. I was, I was watching this going. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> was, I, it took me back to this one beating I got. I was like, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know, they was they was throwing hands. Well, they weren't really throwing hands. Uh, it was just one hand that was thrown to the, to the knee. Yeah, yeah, it was just one hand yeah, being thrown. Was, I think that was kind of the end. Uh, I actually felt sorry for my mom the last two spankings she gave me. I just cried because I felt sorry. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hey, man. hey, man. Like, I knew. I knew. My mother My mother said, be somewhere at 8 o'clock. you supposed to be there at 7.50. One yeah. day I showed up at 8.10. We stand in front of my grandmother's house. And I did like this. And why I do that? She just snatched the picket off the fence. And bam, broke it on me. I was like, and it broke across my arm playing football. I'm like, and then I was like, oh, play hurt. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you had the, the, the you injury. Play hurt, oh, yeah, you yeah, play hurt, she gonna hit you again. So my mother had no problem hitting you no more. It's like, hey. What's up? Hey, What's up? In, the in, in the building from the, from the MIA. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, this is, I'm in you. It just, Oh, I gotta be outside, and my mom super strict. And then I, I remember Nisi. I remember having that moment with my mother when I was older. I was like seventeen. She trying to get me to come in the house at eight thirty nine o'clock. Hey, mom! At that point, I just at that point I was just like, look, mom, mom, I'm not a girl. And she, I think it clicked. Like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, he's not a girl. I'm not gonna go out and get pregnant. <laughs> trying to get somebody pregnant. <laughs> somebody I'm pregnant. Pregnant. Yeah. Trying to go through the steps, but ah. And then she kind of slacked up. But then she was like, hey, don't nobody, I don't care how old you are. At midnight, you either going to sleep on the porch or you're going to come in the bed my house. A couple of nights, I slept on the porch. It was a bad boy. boy. <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't even doing nothing. Nicole was sad. I, I wasn't even really doing I'm standing outside with Big Illinois. <laughs> right in front of the house. You're right down the street. And you, no, no, Ben. In front of the house. The first time house. I got arrested, it was because I beat up. It was this, we used to live in this apartment building, and the security guy was just harassing me, man. And I grabbed him in his car and body slammed him. And I fit a punch, and the police pulled their guns on me and arrested mm. me. And I went home, and, you know, they kept me. I was I was an adult at this point. I was like 19 at this time. And um, I went, got arrested, and they let me go. My coach was uh one of he was a cop. He was like, man, it's your mouth. I was like, yeah, I ain't doing nothing this. And I told him they let me go. So now I gotta wait around to seven o'clock to go in my mama's house because I don't want to know I got arrested. <laughs> I walk in the house, she said, Where you been? 
And I was about to lie. I was like, mm. I said, I got arrested. She said, I know, I saw you. I was watching you get arrested. I told you, stop <laughs> running around. I was, I was she like, was watching you. She was thinking, she was <laughs> I was watching you. Get she was I, didn't right. call. I was like, you, that man, and, you know, my mother, she was, she was like, they mother. She, I'm telling you, I was really enjoying this. I was like, yeah, she's just like my mother. And, and I told her that, and, and, and she said, why didn't you call to come get me to come get you? I was like, well, you told me, only my mother told all three of us, if you go to jail, don't call me unless you stole a million dollars. Because it takes some sense to get uh, still a million dollars. You stupid otherwise. I was like, well, I ain't still a million dollars, so I'm sitting this cell. I'm trying to let the call you. Uh, Theodora confirmed, she said, true, I went back home for about three months and I was 30, and she told me to be in the house at 1130. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. See, she gave me midnight, and I was like, look, lady, I'm going to you, well, <laughs> and the club don't let out the two, so I'm on the porch. All right, so Nicole, <laughs> this, 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 this is right up your alley right here. You being a mom, uh, you know, talk about, you know, some of your experiences that kind of related to, uh, to Denise or just, you know, your kids, period. I think that I had the most interaction with my oldest son, Keegan, as far as being rebellious. Mm. And that was pretty difficult. But at sometimes you have to, as a mom and stuff, you know, after you have gone under your kid or after they've gotten a spanking or anything like that, you have to uh, you go in the, in the room and just laugh because of how their reaction was, right. <laughs> that right. they didn't expect that to take place. Yeah. So yeah. So I did. I th I th he was the most that he thought he could get away with more than the other kids could. He, not, no matter what I would say, most of the time he would do that. But the other kids, not so much. My oldest daughter, Chastity, she wasn't really rebellious or anything like that. Or my youngest daughter, Kenyana, she's not like that, and neither is Kyler. But Keegan did eventually grow out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wasn't bold enough. Um, you know, I, there's really only one. Uh, well, there's a couple of stories. One of them, uh, we end up going to the Warriors game, and we basically caught the the train, which is like the Dart or you know whatever public train system. And um, you know, we got off at the wrong station, and so we walked from West Oakland, which in that particular area at that time mm. of night is not the best possible way. Or option and we walk down like San Pablo. If you if you've been to the Bay Area as a main street, it'll take you all the way through, you know, all the way from Berkeley basically to Richmond. But we walked all the way from there to to Emeryville, which is like past Oakland. Uh and I got home, my mom was like, I don't know what you was thinking, but like, you here. I mean, that was it. I mean, she I thought I was about to get all all of the uh the beating that night, but they, you know. Y'all was together, and y'all was smart. So, but yeah, it was uh, you know I wasn't really that bold to do a whole much. Uh, my middle sister was probably the one that probably gave him the most because she was uh, she just the fire, she the firecracker of the uh, of the, the three of us. But you know, back back to the film. Uh, so Twinkie meets uh, John Terrell and meets him on the stairwell, and I'm like, yeah, this dude ain't no good. I knew this dude. Mm -hmm. ain't no good. I knew it. I knew it. I didn't even know anything about this guy. I didn't even look him up, but I just figured, like, this ain't going to go well. Because, that, like her mom said, the first person you meet, right. he, scary. he ain't even got no job. Uh, so I knew, I kind of had a feeling like, all right, this dude's going to be, uh, it's not going to work out. And then I seen she was divorced, so I'm like, yeah, something obviously happened. Mm -hmm. But, uh, Nicole, g give me your thoughts. John Terrell meets her on the steps. What, what was your thoughts? Yeah, it was that was my same thoughts too. I was like, she and if it is was that her even her first the first man she I wonder if that was even the first man that she had interaction with. I think so. And it might have been the first man because she took to him immediately. Yeah. yeah he didn't have pretty much. Yeah. And uh and I would I'm like the mom, I would have been saying, Girl, what are you doing? Do you even know him? Right. Think about who you are and and you don't even know who he is. Maybe he already knew. I know he already knew who she was. Mm -hmm. And that's why he gravitated to her. And yeah. he knew that she had never been with no anybody else at that point. Mm -hmm. I'm, is what I'm assuming. 
but I think he was using her because whenever he on the par where they moved in together mm -hmm. and stuff, he was coming in asking about money, why she wasn't working and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, like you, yeah. You, Mickey Clark, you should be making money. She, like, right. I mean, she was so uh and she was so timid too that she just did, you know, whatever she could to try to keep the family. And they had a they had a son. So mm -hmm. they, they did she did have that kind of pressure and responsibility. But right. Moten, yeah, she agree. I, I knew he wasn't no good. I knew he wasn't no good from the beginning. But yeah, you started to see more and more. I think Tweaky was ready to know a man biblically. Uh, he was no good. Yeah, he was. Yeah, you, you could tell. Hey, Trap, you want to add anything? Yeah, yeah, you can see he was snaking. I, you know what? I didn't think he was that bad. I knew he was. I knew he was a mooch. <laughs> but I didn't think he was gonna be that bad. You know, because I'm like, well, well, maybe. You know what I mean? I was like, maybe. I, I'm so, I was holding out hope. Yeah. And then my man come in with the. You supposed to be this? What the money at? And I was like. Oh. Mm -hmm. What a bag at? Was he like, what you? I, yep. I mean, I, I'm assuming he wasn't working. He was. I mean, I guess he was the manager. You know, you know, you, you know, <laughs> these people get married. They're like, I'm a manager. Mm -hmm. I'm a manager. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah but, but um, yeah, that didn't work out. That didn't last very long. Not I don't know how long they were. I don't know how long they were married. Um, but yeah, that didn't last. And I don't think she was ever married after that. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's uh. Probably was by choice. Probably by you know, you 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 in your work, and, and she was definitely, she definitely was in her work. She still probably mm -hmm. is now. She's that in her what seventies? How old is she? Man? Yeah, all of them in their seventies. So man, uh, so that just shows you know, the first person you meet may not be the right person. Now I heard that's and I'm true. Thinking, and you know, when they came over to visit the mom, I was like, this ain't gonna go well. You, you might as well just should have called or waved by, but you know, it's your mom. You, you just stop. Yeah. But looking back, now I'm looking at the movie in my mind. Yeah, you knew he was no good when he pushed the mama to the ground. I'm out yes. here. He he mama, I got to stab you, man. I got to stab you. Yes. He did push her down to the ground. Come on. Because I, I, I was trying, I mean, it seemed like it was a tussle, but it seemed like he basically pushed her. Mm -hmm. He pushed her to the ground. I'm like, yeah, at that point, you can't leave with this dude. If he yeah. if he would do that to your mom, you next. That don't even do to you. Yeah, yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah, what yeah. I mean, that's what I was thinking. Man, he pushed. He pushed his pushed. The, I don't care how bad your mom acted fool with me. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna cuss out of my head and I'm gonna leave. But <laughs> right. he was gonna put my hands on your mom because yeah, your natural instinct is to kill somebody who put their hands on your mom. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And yeah, then I was, and I think at that point she. Uh, so diabetes is what she had. I think her mm -hmm. leg might have been amputated at that point, or at some at point. At least, so, at the at the least. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. she was. Uh, you could just tell that she was not in a good state. Uh, and, but yeah, he was. That was no good. But I knew he, them going over there was not going to end well, especially right. she was already, and she clearly needed. Uh, Twinkie, I think emotionally, I think that was like her. That was her rock. It was, mm -hmm. it was she so was. That was her. That was her everything. That was she didn't have a husband. She was living there by herself. So that was like you were my caregiver. You and you're leaving me. So, and I, that was really the first moment that she ever broke down and kind of showed, you know, some, uh, I think, I expression towards her daughters because I think that's another thing that sometimes. Parents don't show their their soft side to their kids. It's right. just hard the hard part. But your parents are definitely uh, all of our parents are definitely cried, right? and mm -hmm. maybe they didn't cry in front of us. And how many times did she, you know, tell them that she loved them or that she appreciated them? So a lot of those things I think started to hit deep for all yes. the girls, kind of at different times. Uh, but they all started to kind of be like. You know, do you do you really do you want us or do you just want us for the music? And that's what she said. You just want you just want me to be your organ player. And so that I think that was that was again, that was a great scene, but also that was an eye opening moment, I think, for the mom too. Yeah, but I think that their mom thought that she was doing the best that she could do yeah. for them could to do could do for them, like any other mom would. Right. And I think that she just didn't I guess she just held on to them for too long and they wanted to do their own things. 
Yeah. So. Yeah, and they knew. Uh, I think they knew that uh, their mom is is getting older. Uh, you know, at some mm-hmm. point. I mean, how long can we keep this together? And right. when the mom passed, I think everything kind of crumbled. You know, Dorinda was falling apart with the mom and 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 the other sister where Denise was already gone. I mean, because she was out of the group at, really at that point. Mm-hmm. And I think the group kind of was 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 gone. But uh, you know, and Karen was kind of doing her own thing. She got married. She is still married. So, you know, side note, Dorinda and Karen are still married. Uh, to the same mm-hmm. man to this day so you know they i think uh you know applaud to them you know for uh taking some of that that wisdom uh let me see parents do the best they can with what they have and she did I mean. and if she didn't give them she gave them a a foundation i think that's really the most important thing yes she gave them a foundation of the bible what to follow uh how to be young women uh, she didn't let them wear pants. <laughs> but the funny point when when I think who was that that came? I think that was Jackie that came by and she gave her a gift, which was pants. <laughs> yes, she did. Uh-huh. So I mean, <laughs> like I think she really and towards the end, I think she really started to come around. Like this is right. I really need to push lay back a little bit because I know I'm towards the end. So let me do what I can to love yeah. them. At this point, and even you know, and in the hospital room, and she, I, you know, I felt like that was her way of saying, uh, "I love every one of you guys. This is what I see in you." That was kind of her way of speaking mm-hmm. it you know, before she ended up, you know, passing away. So, you know, that was that was another powerful scene. That hospital scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I haven't I haven't experienced anything like that, but I know if, it's got to be hard when you're in that that moment. And you know your mom's bragging on you. You don't know how much time she really has left, right? And it kind of seems shortly after that. And I don't know how true to the story it is, or but they left and they came back. You know she was gone. So mm-hmm. you know, hey, yeah. Trap, I know you're you lost your mom. You know? Yeah, I mean, I I experienced that. I mean, I had, like the one sister. I've experienced that. Um, I had to this. I had the displeasure of watching my mom transition. I mean, uh, I had a conversation with her. She was in a coma. And I was like, hey, I'm going to be okay. Because you could see her fighting. You know, she's she trying to fight for us. She's fighting for her grandchildren, me and my mm-hmm. sisters. And I just held her hand and told her, I said, hey, Ma, you don't have to be here. You know, and a couple of minutes later, I watched her transition. So I was watching that going, wow. Yeah, but it's, it's mm-hmm. tough, man. You don't know you don't know um how much time you got you know and then like when the one sister you could she knew and you know you get to thinking what like my mom was suffering from uh she was fighting with cancer so you knew it was going to be soon you just didn't know when it was and it was just two instances at the very end and the week before the very end and i was just i was watching this going yeah i've been there been there it's not cool you know of course it's not cool but it's just it's a painful experience it's i wouldn't wish it on the worst person in the world so when the one sister was like no nah, i'm gonna stay and i stay i mean like i was there every day only thing i would do is go home take a shower come right back yeah go home take a shower come right back sit there with my mom all day every day and you know i had the pleasure of being with my mom the last year of her life every day cooked three meals kept you know me and my sisters and my nieces kept the house clean so you know it's watching that you know and then the ironic part is i'm coming up on the 13th anniversary uh in september of my mother's transition so it was kind of weird watching it but yeah man it's tough it's it's a it's it's a weird feeling um i uh i was telling uh uh, my boy bud recently because i I watched one of i literally (laughs) again i didn't think about that but uh my friend ernest his dad died three weeks ago and two weeks ago at his dad's funeral his mom literally dropped dead she went she went to the coffin to touch her husband of 50 years and we men you know me and the guys were sitting around that day it was the errol spence fight and i told my boy bud i was like bud i know you hang with your mom a lot but make sure 
you say everything to your mother. I was like, dude, we're 53 now. I said, that happened to me when I was 40. It, it, you know, and the one, the only saving grace about cancer is I was there with my mom every day. And I got to tell my mother all those things that, you know, how people go, man, I wish I would have. I emptied all that wish I would out of me. So I'd advise you guys to start just telling your mothers and parents, you know, your parents and everything, how much you appreciated them because mm -hmm. it ends. I'm talking about, damn. I mean, I yeah. remember the very first thought after my mom transitioned was it's over. And I didn't even, uh, 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 I didn't even, I didn't know what to do. To this day, I, I have yet to share the tear because I'm kind of confused. I don't even, you know, I don't, to be perfectly honest with you guys, I don't know if I've come to grips with my mother gone. I don't know if I've said it to myself. Like I said out loud, I don't know if I, I've said it. So, you know, I don't know. One day I might be walking down the street just, die! <laughs> I don't know. But, you yeah. know, it's just watching that, I was I could definitely relate to that one sister that was, no, nah, I don't want to go. But it was just, yeah. yeah. It's like she she knew. I mean, that, that was good uh, cinematography right there because you kind of, you knew something was about to happen. And she she even had a breakdown too. It was like I just I can't I can't do this anymore. I can't do life anymore. Um, and Theodora says it's hard to watch a strong woman become so weak she can even hold her head up. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and I believe that the mom stopped taking her medication. Love you too, Phil. True. True. Yeah. And it, so the older sister Jackie was a nurse. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So she was like, hey, you I know you don't want to take this, but you gotta take this. And she was eating, I guess it looked like she was eating chips. I mean, she was mm -hmm. she, she, she was reverting back and she kind of became Denise. Mm -hmm. Denise her life, I'm gonna live my life. You know, God got it. Uh, and I think too that that is and you know, it goes back to our I think culture is that we uh we gotta take care of ourselves, we have to do our part. Right. You know, God does have it under control. We have to do our part. You have to take care of this temple that he's entrusted you with. So, I mm -hmm. mean, you can't be eating fast food every day. You cannot do it. That food is not healthy for you. It's not meant for you to eat it every day. Um, That's true. So, any day. Any day. Facts. But, I mean, so we got to, we have to do our part. And I think she... Uh, the mom really started to to listen more to her daughter, her daughter being in that field, and and uh, to touch on Jackie for a minute, we haven't talked about her a lot. But she was like, "That's why I'm gonna get a real. That's why I'm gonna get this nursing job, so I don't have to depend on none of y'all niggas." <laughs> basically, mm -hmm. what was, basically, what she was getting at, uh, and she was kind of the one. She was the oldest, and she was like, "Look, I'm not. This is not gonna be my end all be all." And so she became the nurse. And they even said at the end that she was still traveling. She was still doing tours and everything. But she just, you know, she wanted to have uh, something of her own and have her own career. So, mm -hmm. you know, this, this many women in this particular group, you knew, you know, that, that they're going to want to do their own thing. Some of them are going to stick around and stay in the group. Some of them going to stick and stay with uh, being a, a music artist. And some of them not. So. Uh, so September 22nd, which in about less than a month, uh, 1994 was in uh, Dr. Clark passed away. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really, you know, they had a, a tribute that they showed that was on some type of, I think it was the BET Awards. Um, and just showing kind of a montage of her, which I felt like that was really cool to see. And I mean, she was, she wanted the absolute best. Uh, mm -hmm. for her. And she said that. Now, the one point I did want to go back to, if you were in a situation, Cole, I'm going to come to you first, where the church, which was the Kojic church, told her, look, you got to step down from from basically leading and, and directing your daughter's group, uh, or, you know, you got to step down, or if you don't step down, you know, you, you're not going to have this position anymore. What, what would you would have done in that situation? Oh, that would have been that would have been a tough call, but we don't know what we don't know her reasoning 
about why she wanted to push her daughters so much mm. because maybe in her when she was young maybe her parents struggled mm -hmm. and so we don't know what that <clears throat> that felt like for her and she probably just wanted to no, I'm not going to do, you know, I'll rather do the, take, you know, give my kids this opportunity than not yeah. because like, what if I don't, what, what is their life going to be like? Because right. parents don't want your, they want better for you than, yeah. than you want for yourself. Right. So I'm, I just think about it that way. And I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have stepped down. Yeah. Or if, if I if I didn't want to step down, I wouldn't have stepped down. If I wanted to, I would have. So I don't think there's no right or wrong answer, but I just think that she wanted the best for her kids. That's why she kept pushing through. Yeah. And I think she she also, you know, probably realized too, if I'm if I'm continuing to push them, uh, how do I know that they really want this for themselves? Mm -hmm. If I'm the one in the front pushing and pushing, and mm -hmm. when I'm gone. And which the group did kind of dissolve when when she when she passed, but I think she really kind of too wanted to see like what what are they made of in this group without me. Mm -hmm. um, and I was kind of around the same time too that they you know performed at the Grammy. What I was actually yeah when they perform performed at the Grammys, that's when the Kodak Church said okay like you can't do that. Uh, but now you fast forward to now, and I mean there's multiple different categories oh, yes. of gospel. A, a lot of them going to that now. Right, right. trap. Yeah, I mean that. I'm right, Nicole. That's with Nicole. That's that has to be extremely difficult. You uh, uh, have to choose between your faith and your and your and your children, yeah. because, like Nicole said, maybe she they, maybe she was living vicariously through them and mm -hmm. pushing them. And like you said, maybe it became at some point maybe she was thinking she was pulling them instead of pushing them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was that man. That's that's a that's a that's a hell of a decision to make. Your God in your mind, God, or or your children, right? right. And I think I think the church was was over the top with that. But you know, I, I again, I'm ignorant to the whole process, so I can't really speak about it. But I do believe, as she stated, I'm doing this for the Lord because now one thing about the mom and this. I never questioned her dedication to her children or to God. And they oh, yes. brought it to her as if that was the thing. And and, and I do believe, like, I, I even looked it up. I think it's Matthew's. Hey, I look it up. I, I, I found the scripture and I texted it to myself. Give me a second. And uh, I, I looked it up. I found this for me. Uh, it was Mark 713. You know, your, your traditions were standing in the way of my word. That's what Jesus said. And mm -hmm. This is that. This is a perfect example of that. Yeah, yeah. You we, and a lot of times you get so stuck in what uh, the church does or what our parents did and what their parents did. Right. But is it true? Is it true to the word of God? That's what it really comes down to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think they and and the and I think the church had more control during that time and and the position that she had, which she had it for, I don't know. I think it was probably what 10, 10, 15 years or something at that point, that that was that was her life. So she had a lot really to contemplate. But she gave him and she gave it all she had when she came in that meeting. And she turned back around and said, look, let me tell you another, let me tell you another thing. So she was not, mm -hmm. she didn't just walk off like and, and you know bow her head and just leave. So but I think it, it was, you know, I think it would end up being for the betterment for all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so the uh, last couple dates, <clears throat> 2001, Karen Clarkshire, which I didn't know this, had a life-threatening blood vessel burst uh, during a bariatric surgery. The doctors gave her a 2% chance of survival. Mm -hmm. She ended up surviving it, after, and she fell into a coma. So, I mean, mm -hmm. like, the, their their story definitely needed to be a film. Because there were oh, yeah. things in this I didn't know, uh, but also... Uh, the mom really got a lot of uh, shine, which she should. You know, if you when you make a Jackson Five movie, you got to have Joe in it. If Joe's not mm -hmm. in it, the story don't even exist. So, I think they did a great job with that. And in 2008, they had the reunion and the song "Blessed" and "Highly Favored." Uh, but Denise did not. They said she did not respond. But she uh, she is a doctor now, so I looked her up. She's a doctor, and uh, with her. 
her kids and she has a foundation. So, I mean, they're all doing well from what I could look up and see. Um, and that, that, you know, speaks volumes to the mom again. Cause she mm-hmm. did the majority of it on her own. So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I think this was definitely a great film to review. Uh, let's uh, let's get into some final thoughts and our mic ratings. So, you know, one to five mics, uh, and we'll we'll give two ratings. So the first one, the code would be what we uh, thought about it after we watched it, and then if it changed at all, you know, during you know throughout tonight as we talked about it. So uh, we'll go to our guest first, uh, Nicole. Well, I thought I didn't. I thought that the the film was great, and I, um, based on your ratings that you guys do, is it a fi- the five is the highest? Five is the highest. Yes, and I that's I give it I give it five a five definitely a five because I already had seen it like I told you before I didn't realize I had already seen it, and yeah. then my, till my daughter said, "Mama, you already saw that uh, with us back when it first came out," but I watched it again today, and it's definitely a five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it gave a lot of depth. I mean, it didn't. Yes. It, 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 it probably left a little bit because you know you could have went off and talked more right. about each, each one, but it I think it gave you probably the bulk of you know the information. Mm-hmm. But uh, a trap. Uh, I'm gonna do the before and after. I'm I'm a four and four, four and four, okay. before and after. But uh, um, you know what? I'll probably give it a four and a half after after this conversation. Simply because, like you said, you know, you, you know, one of my pet peeves is I always say I want it to be a mini series because I want to know as much as I can about the people. But you mm-hmm. did get to learn a lot about <laughs> the people. You know, you knew about the mom, you knew about the sisters, you knew about the trials and tribulations of everybody going on. So, you know, what I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna do what Nicole said. I'm gonna give it a five, man, because okay. you okay. found out a lot in a short period of time, and then they didn't oversaturate it. They got straight to the point. We, we learned how to play music. My mother pressed us. We went into this. Our sisters broke up. We got back together. And then, like you said, at the end, uh, they they gave details of each sister at the very end of the, yeah. uh, of the movie. So yeah. you got a little bit of everything. So, yeah, I'm going to give it a five. I, I walked into it a four. And after the conversation, I gave it a five. All right. All right. Uh, Ready Care says Astros Rim. Uh, sorry, wrong show. Yeah, definitely the wrong show. Because we, we're in <laughs> Texas. We're a Rangers fan over here. But uh, also movie about the power of women. Yeah, you, you said it, four and a half mics. So I, I started off with a four. Uh, I felt like it was solid. Mm-hmm. I think it, uh, you know, it really gave a lot of the information like we've been talking about tonight. And they were truly the first uh, ladies of gospel. And when we say gospel, because, you know, obviously uh, Mahalia Jackson, which we did hers, mm-hmm. we did Aretha Franklin, but this was such a different version of, of gospel that they were, yeah, they were pioneers of this, you know, uh, level of it. Um, so, yeah, I had a four and a half, a four. I went up it to a four and a half after this conversation because I felt like this, this as we talked and dived into it, there were so many aspects of it that, you know, really showed a deeper meaning. There were so many parallels to a lot of things we reviewed, uh, to the music industry. And so, yeah, I'm going to give it a, a four and a half. So. Yeah, definitely was uh, was a good suggestion as we kind of round out um, Gospel Appreciation Month. And we thank you, Nicole, for coming on the show. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Team Leo, baby. <laughs> yeah, all day, every day. All day. Uh, that's, that's 365 my wife, days a week, a year. <laughs> yeah, August the 15th, my wife's birthday, too. So, yeah, she's one of them. Man, y'all some strong-willed people, man. Y'all are some yes, we are. <laughs> make the world go round. Make make life easier, man. <laughs> All right. So next week, uh, we will be off. It is uh, Labor Day, so uh, enjoy time with your families. Uh, I'll probably be eating some barbecue somewhere. Uh, so we'll be off next week, and then uh, what's coming up tomorrow on the, the end of the day? Uh, I'm torn. Well, I'm gonna talk about. Um, hold on. One of the things I'm gonna talk about. Uh, uh, I'm talking about freedom schools. Freedom schools is this uh, concept in the uh, mid '60s, and freedom schools, seeing how we have an attack on Black history, and Ron DeSantis in the state of Florida, and they have an, they have an attack on Black history. They want to rewrite history. They just 
rolled out this program saying that slavery was beneficial to our people. Mm. And I'm talking about how freedom schools need to be or need to be a rebirth of freedom schools. Freedom schools started in the mid '60s by the uh, Student Nonviolent uh, Coalition Committee, uh, SNCC, they're most commonly known by. They were the underbelly of the uh, Christian Baptist organization that was run by Dr. Martin Luther King and Ralph Abernathy and that crew. They were the uh, the youngins, so to speak, under them. They, well, Dr. King wasn't that damn old at, at that point either, but they were the college students that were doing things. And they started educating people on civics, edu- pe- educating people on history and things of that nature. And they were funded by the community for the community and made the community a better place. We need to re- we need to have a rebirth of that because other cultures, I've had supervisors like this dude, Nick Kalamalosakis, a Greek cat, he went to Greek school. So we need to start, and instead of arguing, we, we continue to fight about a- academics and you know history being taught properly in our in institutions of education, but we also need to take it upon ourselves to educate our young people. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the schools come about because some of our, you know, some of the people who are around, the ancillary people around us, they don't know. So how can you teach your child about something that you don't know? Of course you should know. But you know what? I shouldn't be 240 pounds, but I am. So, you know, we're not going to talk about what should be. We're going to talk about what it is. Right, right. So, and I'm also going to talk about gun control. Um, Ray Kev, he's in the audience. He's a gigantic gun enthusiast. But at some point, I'm going to ask people like Ray Kev to take a step back and start looking around and seeing that uh, when we had more gun control, you know, there were bans on certain weapons, there were less gun violence. Understand? You want your freedoms. I don't want anybody to be, uh, uh, you know, I, want you, I don't want anything to stop. I don't want to amend, I don't want to uh, amend any of your freedoms, but at some point, we're going to have to start taking a look at, hey man, why do you need a gun that shoots 38 bullets in 24 seconds? So you have, to start looking, you have to start looking in the mirror. I agree. Right. You mm-hmm. know, this last instance in uh, Orlando, that my family's from Florida. My dad's family's from Florida. My dad was born in Lakeland, Florida, down the street from Orlando. So, you know, my cousin Mike lives there now. First cousin, he's like a brother to me. He has two boys. He has a daughter. He has two boys and two girls. They're in Florida right now. So, you know, he could potentially be in danger. So we need, we need to revisit this. Uh, mm-hmm. There's hatred in other countries. The hatred is something that's been around since the word go. And there are things that we need to do to, you're not going to stop evil. Evil is going to be here. You know, you got to have right. a sun so you can appreciate the moon. You got to have a moon to appreciate the sun. It's going to be a yin and yang. But while other countries has, they got red, they got discrimination, they have uh, segregation, they have hatred, they have all the things that we have, but they don't have gun issues. So at some point, as a society, as a culture, we're going to have to curtail some of this gun purchasing so these nuts, because see, Ray the Kev is an is isn't a maniac. He's not a, a lunatic. He's doing this for sport. Other people are doing it for uh, violent reasons, and we need to do mm-hmm. something to slow those things down. And then I got a couple of you know me. I'm not, I'm never completely done Monday night. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I got a couple more things that I'm gonna talk about. And, I got, <clears throat> and then I do my history, the history video. I already uploaded my history video, so I'm ready to go. But. Those are, that's what I'm going to talk about tomorrow because it's important. You know, these are things that are important. And uh, me and Mo finally picked out a date, the 18th. I'm going to be doing two shows on Mondays now. Oh, okay. Chief Seats will be Monday evening, and then I'll be on here later, Monday evening. And I've, I've, I've officially come out of retirement for sports, and it's called Hold My Beer Sports. So all you guys have been pressing me to get back into sports. I'm back. <laughs> Looking forward to it. What, what what time is uh Park Bench gonna be on? Uh the Chief Seats uh probably about an hour and a half before this show. Okay. There's only gonna be an hour. And then hold my beer, I'm not sure because um there's a couple of things in the works. It, it, it be, may be uncomfortable for one or two people. I'll tell you about that after the show. But <laughs> <laughs> You know, but I'm I'm already the villain, man. You know what I'm saying? You, you know me, Ben. I've been the villain since we met. So, right. hey, man, add that to my bag, got resume. All right. Theodore says, congrats, Chief Seats. I'm looking forward to that, for sure. Yeah. All right. So, uh, coming up tomorrow on Queen 3 and King, uh, Nicole and the crew will be reviewing Overcomers with special guest award-winning uh, Andre Jones, who won podcast mm-hmm. here. So, he'll be on, I don't think, uh, Doc will be there tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. 
uh, I think he may be out. So uh, that'll be coming up tomorrow on Queen Three and King. Make sure to tune in with the new producer, uh, Lakia Kia Patterson, and uh, she is getting her, uh, you know, getting her experience in on the job experience. OJ. She's good. Yeah, she's doing an excellent job. So yeah, definitely tune in to that tomorrow. They got a great show like they do every week. A trap as well. And uh, we will close it out. A trap. As usual. Uh, salute to Reggie O'Shea by saying, dream your dreams and man up and woman up and live your dreams. Because life without dreams flows in black and white. Life with dreams flows in technicolor and surround sound. And y'all already know it's this close to the end of my If I owe you something, I ain't got it. Because rent due next week. And if you need it, <laughs> get it from God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV.